with a dental dam, I used to think you had to like put it on your face. Yeah. I thought it was like something you wore. And I was oh. like, that would be like a weird turn off. Hi guys, it's me P. And I'm here with one of my favorite humans in the whole world. It's my cousin Gabe. <laughs> Thanks for being a part of this video with me. Yeah, I'm really excited and looking forward to it. I want to talk about sexual health and I want to talk about safe sex and protection. I think there's things like, obviously I do the best I can to check up on myself and my own sexual health, but I feel like a lot of people tend to stray away from that or they're like nervous about their sexual health. I think it would be cool to get like your perspective. Uh, I think we've had a lot of conversations about this like offline. I think it's really interesting to realize, like, I mean, you've told me about all these misconceptions people have. I'm licensed in Canada to practice family medicine. Um, so I'm a family doctor. Um, and I also have some additional training to practice emergency medicine. I do have a lot of experience with sexual health in my residency training. So uh, it's also one of my favorite topics to talk about with patients. It's actually kind of shocking how much stuff I feel like I didn't learn about sexual health in school and I've mm -hmm. been learning things from the internet I've learned things from you mm -hmm. like I went to a Catholic school and I feel like there's things that we just didn't really touch upon and especially for me like we didn't learn a lot about like lesbian sex we learned about heterosex how to yeah. stay safe in a hetero relationship I guess like to start it off I kind of want to talk to you about like safe gay sex yeah <laughs> let's start with a bang let's go <laughs> safe gay sex yeah let's do it i was reading um up some stuff on the internet and a lot of people were saying that lesbians don't need to use protection because i feel like a lot of people also associate protection with a penis you know like using a condom and people mm -hmm. don't when it's two women involved two women who have like a vulva people don't think we're protecting it or you should, but that's still like, you gotta protect yourself. So I wanted to talk to you about like, what are some options for women? That's a very common myth that lesbian women or bisexual women uh, don't have uh, a risk of STDs. That's absolutely not true. If you break it down to specific STDs, yes, women who have sex with women have a lower risk of HIV. Um, and that's particularly because um, HIV is um, not often transmitted through oral sex. The highest transmission risk is with penetrative anal sex, but for other STDs, this includes things like HPV, which we can talk about. This includes chlamydia, gonorrhea, uh, this includes like herpes. Um, all of these things, uh, you can totally absolutely get it uh, if you uh, have sex with women exclusively. You can also get uh, transmissions through sharing sex toys. There are a lot of ways that you can protect yourself. Um, so one option is the use of dental dams, an additional barrier protection that you can use when you're going down on someone, like you're giving oral. Yeah. Um, the other option is uh, using gloves. Using gloves, like a latex glove, is safe and can protect you from bodily fluids. And then the other thing is actually using condoms on sex toys. Which I don't think a lot of people think about with sex toys. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, like you need to be safe with your sex toys and you need to be cleaning them as well mm -hmm. after you use them. Yeah, and, and I've thought about why that might be. You made a really good point um, that maybe it's because people associate um, sexually transmitted diseases with penetrative sex um, and penises. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if in your experiences, do you feel like that might be, because I don't know what the assumptions are that make people feel that um, women who have sex with women don't get STIs. From what I remember growing up and when I started learning about sex ed, it was always like hetero relationships. And truthfully, there's not a lot of advertisement that people do when it comes to safe sex um, in the LGBTQ population. I mean, there is when it comes to use of condoms uh, in the population of men who have sex with men. And that's largely driven uh, by the uh, AIDS epidemic. You know, HPV is uh, the most common cause of cervical cancer, and it's a sexually transmitted virus. Um, and we actually do see that uh, cervical cancer screening and rates of screening 
for uh, trans people as well as women who have sex with women is markedly lower um, than cis hetero women. And a lot of that I think has to do with this belief system that, well, if I don't get HPV, then how can I get cervical cancer? Um, and so people don't get screened, but that's totally a myth. And HPV, for example, is not uh, something that presents with a lot of symptoms. Um, so, you know, you may have had um, in sex with one person that had HPV before, and now you carry that virus, and there's several strains of this virus for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And you might never know that there are symptoms of HPV until you're 50, 60 years old. So sometimes the eventual symptom could be cervical cancer. I honestly like hope people realize like how important this is, because like I don't know, maybe it's getting better with like our generation. But I don't like how often do you think people should be getting tested? If you're sexually active and you're having uh, and you have more than one sexual partner, you should get tested uh, for routine STI screening uh, between each sexual partner that you've had unprotected sex with. As far as cervical cancer screening and HPV screening is concerned, the recommendation here in Canada is to get uh, cervical cancer screening every three years. Um, and this is through a pap smear. In Ontario, we do that after the age of 21 uh, pap smears, but in other provinces, it's even younger uh, as soon as you start having sex. Yeah, in which get case- Get pap smears. Yeah, definitely. And definitely get pap smears if you have a uterus, regardless of who you choose to have sex with. If you have a uterus, you should get a pap smear. The other thing I also wanted to mention, um, so we talked about cervical cancer and how to screen for it, is getting HPV vaccines. So you probably have an international audience, so there's different uh, screening guidelines um, for cervical cancer, but then there's also different guidelines for who's eligible for HPV vaccines, depending on country and province even. Check with your doctor if you're eligible for this vaccine. There are different types of these vaccines. Um, uh, one of them you guys might have heard about, there's a Gar Gardasil is the uh, brand name for it. Um, so this vaccine can protect you from several of these strains of HPV um, and can significantly lower your risk of getting HPV strains that cause cervical cancers. Another uh, thing I actually wanted to talk to you about is like I touched upon this a little bit in my last video. There's a huge assumption that goes around of like people saying that they think lesbians are virgins. What like what are your thoughts of that from like a doctor perspective of people being like, oh, well, if like, let's say this lesbian has never had sex with a man. Mm -hmm. she would need like to break her hymen like penetration from a penis like that stuff uh -huh. there's so many things that i find ridiculous with that assumption because obviously you can also break your hymen other ways like i'm actually curious to hear like a male perspective as a doctor i'll tell you that virginity is not a medical concept at all right like i don't ask about virginity i ask about um things like what your sexual practices are specifically because as we kind of talked about earlier like doesn't penetrative sex is not the only way that you can get um, a sexually transmitted disease or change your risks uh, medically it's not a biologic concept um, it's it's very much something that's man-made that we seem to hang our hat on and i completely agree with you People can uh, have their hymen disrupted in all kinds of different ways. Yeah. Um, many people um, may not have a hymen. Um, many women uh, may lose their hymen, uh, yeah, with tampons, with different things that can cause the hymen to break sometimes spontaneously as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so this has caused, you know, if you look at historically, this has caused a lot of issues for, for a lot of women in cultures where um, you know, quote, virginity is um, valued or overvalued, right? Um, women sometimes have a lot of fear of harm to themselves um, when they get into relationships, for example, where people overvalue whether the hymen is intact or not intact. And many women have lost their lives to this. Um, and so, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. The concept is, is kind of weird to me. Like it's never really made a lot of sense. Um, no. And to me, it's like, I, like recent, not like too recently, because I feel like it's been a few years since I've kind of been like, I just think virginity is just like this made up social construct for sure, for sure. But I even think like, you know, when you're in your te teens and you're like starting to get into your early 20s or whatever, I don't know, a lot of like big talks around like your friends or like at that time is who's still a virgin, like who like you know you would talk about it and late and like at that time that's totally what i believe too like losing your virginity 
is like penis enters the vagina. Like that's all I thought. And that's also what we're taught. We're taught that. It feels like a big function of the patriarchy, right? That like the the male gender is who can give, who can take away virginity, right? Um, and the penis is the only thing that can take away uh, someone's virginity. Um, right. You lose your virginity through a penis. That's such a, I think, you know, I think probably a lot of that hangs uh, in related to the patriarchy. I, I can tell you it doesn't really have a lot to do with biology um, or, medic, or medicine, you know? Virginity is not something we're taught in medical school or anything I care about <laughs> when I'm assessing people, you know? It's so funny for me to even think about this now because obviously times are changing. <laughs> times have changed for me. <laughs> but yeah. I used to think like, when a woman would have sex with an, another woman and she hadn't slept with a man, I'd be like, oh, well, she slept with, like, she had sex. Like, I know there's lesbian sex, but I was like, oh, but she didn't, like, lose her virginity, technically. Or she, which, I can't believe, like, that. E those words would even come out of my mouth when I was, like, 17. Right. So funny. Well, yeah, I mean, we're all conditioned to believe that, right? I mean, I, I certainly believed it, too, for a long time, right? Yeah. Um, oh, but was there... Or was it sex sex or did yeah, you guys go all, all the way thank you for like teaching us and teaching me <laughs> thank you for telling me what a dental dam was when i was like 19. <laughs> you know what's hilarious though gabe is that i thought it was like something you wore and i was oh. like that would be like a weird turn off situation it's but something you place on the vagina or wherever yeah, yeah. on the vagina like you put it there which is totally no, like that's like you're putting a condom on a penis it's like you just put that on the vagina and then yeah. do your thing and have fun but like i don't know why i used to like picture like a freaking like well, when i used the word dental dam i was like are you wearing something on your mouth well to be honest like i kind of thought that as well for a while it's because when you google dental dams that's what you see is these like photos of a big mouth with something in the mouth yeah and <laughs> yeah and i think that's partly because dentists use dental dams a lot um, and so when dentists use dental dams, yeah, they put it in the mouth and uh, when they do the procedure. Um, mm -hmm. But that's not uh, the same kind of dental dam that's being used. In sex. In sex, yeah. Fun fact too, you can make your own dental dams if you don't want to oh, yeah. yeah, you can make yeah. one um, out of a condom. Oh, that makes sense. You literally can. All you have to do is like cut the tip. Yeah. And then it's it's literally the same thing. Like you open it and then it's like a square. It makes sense. It's the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense actually. And I heard you can make them out of um, gloves too. Like uh, oh, like, like latex gloves. Yeah, 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 latex gloves. So there's no excuses. Yeah. <laughs> protect yourself. Totally, definitely protect yourself. You know, have fun. Uh, <laughs> but there's lots of ways to stay safe, right? And yeah. um, at the end of the day, it's about uh, keeping your well-being, and so uh, you should definitely talk to your doctor about this stuff if you feel comfortable. Talk to Gabe. Yeah. <laughs> You're always teaching me things. <laughs> you guys enjoy now, <laughs> What? Just looking out. <laughs> just looking out for your younger cousin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> her life in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> If you guys liked this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. And if you want to see more of Gabe, definitely let me know. And I hope you guys have a great night, wherever you are in the world. And I'll check back in with you later. See you later. See ya.